Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Hollow Knight. It's time to take one last trip to see the Seer now that we have plenty of Dream Essence to spare. So this is for 1200 Essence. None of us can live forever and so we ask those who survive to remember us. Hold something in your mind and it lives on with you, but forget it and you seal it away forever. That's the only death that matters. So they say, enough that. So next we're going to come back with 1500, which we already have. Also another arcane egg. So close to fully awakening. Continue on your path. So the next thing that we're coming back for is 1800 essence, which again we have. I've been busy. So at 1800 Essence, the Dream Nail becomes the Awakened Dream Nail. The Awoken Dream Nail. And it can break into even the most protected minds. No dream can hide itself from you now. You can peer into the darkest places. Just need to find the right crack. Whose memories will you hunt down? My promise is fulfilled. May the crimes of my tribe be washed away like the rest of this kingdom's. What were those crimes again? And this is the final piece of dialogue from her at 2400. The folk of my tribe were born from a light, light similar to essence, similar to that powerful blade though much brighter still. They were content to bask in that light and honored it for a time. But another light appeared in our world, a worm that took the form of a king. How fickle my ancestors must have been. They forsook the light that spawned them, turned their backs to it, forgot it even, and so this kingdom was born from that betrayal. But the memories of that ancient light still lingered, hush whispers of faith, until all of Hollownest began to dream of that forgotten light. What's done is done, and so am I. The wielder has at last appeared, and I've held the memories of my tribe for long enough. It's time for us to be forgotten, too. Don't remember us, wielder. Don't honor us. We don't deserve it. Light. Radiance! There it is! Radiance! So the Radiance, this godly light, birthed the Moth Tribe, of which the Seer was the last of her kind. How appropriate is that? The light birthed the Moths, and they worshipped the light, the Radiance, until a different light showed up, the Worm, the Pale King. And they forsook the Radiance. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I carry it proudly, though. Wherever I travel, the memories of my family and my kind come with me. Oh, yeah. We're down here in the, uh... In the stag nest, which we'll get to. Where there are a whole lot of fallen stags. We get the achievement Hope. I think that's inappropriately timed. I think we're supposed to get that another time, but still. But yeah, so right before that she mentioned that the only death that matters is forgetting. And she spelled a lot of the plot out for us with that. So what hurt the radiance the most was to be forgotten. An empty eggshell. This is where we were supposed to get hope. The hope that he might not be the last stag. The worst fate for the radiance was to be completely forgotten. And that's what being forsaken by her tribe and everyone else in Hallownest was. was being forgotten. I am Gorb. Bow, 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 bow to Gorb. 
The great mind, I am Gorb. Ascend, ascend, ascend with Gorb. That's why she was sealed in dreams. That's the only place she lived on. And just the faintest memory of the Radiance lingered in the hearts of the denizens of Hallinest, and that's what allowed her to seep out of those dreams as the infection. We got it now. So, it birthed the moths, right? Do you remember back up at Hallow Nest's crown? Where we got that pale ore? There was a statue of a huge moth. It's the only statue like it in the entire game. And it's way up at the top of the world at Hallow Nest's crown. Isolated away from everything else. But still there. Still there to provoke maybe the faintest remembrance. Maybe that's... what allowed memories of, uh... of the Radiance to seep back in. My brother Shio, how fair are you in that green kingdom of thorns you call home? I think of you every time I raise my nail. Do you ever close your eyes and remember the time we spent together with Oro and our master? I like to think you do. Thought I could sense the aura of a fierce warrior approaching. Oh, Mato is my favorite. I'm impressed you found my sanctuary here at the top of the world. No doubt you've endured many trials and overcome many foes in your quest to find me. No, don't speak a word. I, Nailmaster Mato, who was taught the art of the nail by the great nail sage himself, hereby accept you as my pupil. Let us begin the lesson immediately. Gasso! The Cyclone Slash is not bad. Your form, exquisite. Now I know how my own master felt when he passed down his teachings to us. I hope you don't think me too forward when I say that I consider you to be my child. Yes, when I saw you perform my nail art, I felt a bond between us suddenly flash into existence. You honor me beyond words, my pupil. Thank you. Oh, I'm loving Mato. Bum. And they all teach you for different reasons, but this is the first time that we actually heard anything about a great nail sage or a master. I think. I might be wrong. <laughs> so fresh off of all of that... That was our third and final uh, nail art, by the way. Um, so we have this exposition from the seer about the Radiance and how the Radiance lost power because the people of Hallowness turned their back on her in favor of the Pale King. And for a time, the Radiance was forgotten until just precious few memories seeped back and took the form of the Infection. The Infection that we knew had a driving will, a mind of its own, and now we know that that will, that mind, is the mind of the Radiance, the progenitor of the Moth Tri- uh, What? Huh, sorry I missed you. I wonder why... Is it because we beat Gorb? That's really weird. That, uh, Cornifer is not just waiting for us here. I guess it's because we beat Gorb and then technically zoned out of the area to visit the Nail Sage and then transition back in. Huh. That sucks, that would have been our last map, I think. In fact, it's gonna be the last of a lot of things. Because we have precious few areas left to visit, including this one that we're in, the Howling Clips, which we got to from the Stag Nest. Unlocked for us recently upon visiting all of the other Stag Stations in Hallow Nest. Uh, so I've been gathering some stuff for the remaining intermission episode. Uh, 
you know, in the process been finding collectibles off screen. And I think this, in the process, turned into a 112% run. Not quite 112% LP, because I didn't show, you know, some of the collectibles. The charms, the fragments and stuff. But yeah, this turns out I'm about to 112% the game. <laughs> Our last of all of the major collectibles lays here in the, the Howling Cliffs. We got our... Or, well, it's gonna... They're all gonna be in this episode. We got our last Mask Fragment. We got our last Soul Vessel Fragment. Uh, we got our final map. Our last Nail Art. And... We're even gonna get our last Grub here. It's not quite gonna be our final Charm. Oh no, we are going to get a charm though. Joni's Blessing. This is going to help us uh, do the lifeblood core in the Abyss. I see a bear my blessing. I can't remember giving it, but my memory has been a little lacking of late. Isn't it just so peaceful here? Such a perfect place to rest. Hmm. I actually want to see the description of the charm and see if we can learn anything about Joni. Blessed by Joni, the kindly heretic, transfigures vital fluids into blue lifeblood. Hmm. So that'll turn all of our heart or all of our masks into uh, lifeblood masks and add a couple on top of that. That's one of the ways that you can get enough lifeblood uh, to activate the secret in the abyss. You pair that up with just one more lifeblood charm. And that will be in the intermission episode. Because we have things to do for now. Like finish out the Howling Cliffs. Uh, we have a couple of important things left to do here. One of those will involve setting up for uh, one of the DLCs of the game. Which is what we're trying to do now. I think this is it. Yes. Oh, also this! Higher beings, these words are for you alone. These blasted planes stretch never-ending. There is no world beyond. Really? Hmm. Don't trust that. Those foolish enough to traverse this void must pay toll and relinquish the precious mind this kingdom grants. So, one, really interesting they call that a void. Remember, ours is a resilience born of two voids. This one, which they explicitly refer to as a void. Corpse of a large bug, huh. This, which they explicitly refer to as a void. And the literal inky black substance we are made of. That's a pretty important lore tablet. It also explains why the knight and Coral, too, by the way, have no memories. They ventured beyond the Howling Cliffs. And this is how we begin the DLC, by lighting the Nightmare Lantern. Lighting this Scarlet Flame summons uh, Grimm's troop, for whom the DLC is named. It's all hidden away back here in the Howling Cliffs. Uh, so this DLC adds one of the best boss fights in the game, one of the best musical themes in the game, adds uh, a super challenging platforming area, which I have never actually gotten to do, but we will see it in this LP, uh, called the Path of Pain. Otherwise, it's a little bit repetitive. Um, the actual process of going about everything. Oh, that's not our last Caber Pibber. Oh yeah, okay, I remember where the last one is. It's uh, in the Queen's Garden, I think behind the Shade Gate. That was our second to last one. And we can even try to venture out beyond the Howling Cliffs only to be repelled by the winds. 
Look at all the corpses of bugs who tried to leave Hellenist. But it's a good thing that we actually do unlock the Grimm's Troop DLC campaign from here. Because it's going to tell us a lot about the world and the state of it. Namely, it has to do with nightmares. So we've delved into a lot of dreams, right? We've gotten Dream Essence, we've bought Dream Warriors. What about nightmares? Fire is also not a motif that we've dealt a lot with. So red flames become fairly important to this one. I think that's about it for Howling Cliffs, too. So we're going to go back to uh, the last stag. I'm going to have a chat with him. And then we're going to go back to Dirtmyth and see what we summoned. It's full of life once stags coming and going, swapping stories of the places they'd been and the passengers they'd met. For a long time now, I've considered myself the only re one remaining, the last stag, but being in the nest again, there's something in the air, a smell or a warmth or a presence, perhaps. We did find that egg. Could it be other stags that made their way out into the wider world? Oh, look at that. Yes, I'll hold on to hope my kin's still alive, still out there, journeying beyond these lands. But for me, I could never abandon the stagways, not as long as passengers still need them. I can tell you still have important work to do. I'll be your companion as long as my old body still serves. Let us enjoy the old stagways of this kingdom together a little longer. I cannot tell you how much I love that his name changes. Okay, so we see some new red signage. But first, we're going to visit Sly who is not in his shop, but instead is in a chamber beneath the shop. This is his storeroom. There's a giant nail there. These refined weapons, the battles of Geo, are much deadlier. So another would join our group. I have a gift for you, warrior. As a shopkeeper, I admit parting, it, uh, parting with it for free is rather difficult. But as the great nail sage, I must recognize your skill. You have mastered the arts of my, of my remaining pupils. Now tradition decrees you two may hold this symbol. Bama. Wear it proudly, nail master. You shall be the last to receive its like. Gives us nail master's glory, which decreases the charge Bama. time on all the nail arts. Got nothing more to give. Nothing for free, at least. I'll be up briefly and eager to take your geo and trade for my precious wares. So Sly was the great nail master all along. Oh, but there's so much more in town now. Why must these grotesque strangers intrude on our peaceful little home? Sometimes it feels like the whole world is conspiring to make me uncomfortable. <laughs> this crotchety, cantankerous old man. Uh, something strange and sinis sinister has suddenly appeared. Fills me with dread. I think at best I try to ignore it. Oh, oh these look like Willow. Uh, I think they're called Grimsteeds. And they have explicitly visited other lands. A lot of them, from the sounds of it. Grim's troop gets along. Gets around. Shadow and fire will dance together so prettily, I think. Ah, did you call us? You called us and we came, we came. You don't look scared. Why did you call us? Ah, it doesn't matter, don't tell me. We came and I can smell something, something deep below us. I want it, I want it. So she is a... You're hiding something nice from me, aren't you? I shouldn't hide something so nice. Put it on, quickly. So we know that Sly uh, reacts really positively to, to uh, the smell of the Defender's Crest. 
So let's try that and see if that's what she's talking about. Since she's a termite like he was, or like he is, didn't transform. Ah, so strong, so virile, but not the odor that calls. I crave a different smell, precious, sensitive, fragile. I love that she has different dialogue for that. So, you know how Sly sells us the fragile charms? She will take them from you and then sell them back as unbreakable versions for massive amounts of Geo. Like converting the uh, fragile strength to unbreakable strength is 15,000 Geo. When flame burns bright inside one's mind, can heed the call, cross lands in time. Babala, Geno. Speak to Master. Oh, I love the music for this for this DLC. And Grim. So it was you who called us. Well met, my friend, well met. I'm Grim, master of this troop. The lantern has been lit and your summon heated. A fine stage you choose, this kingdom fallowed by worm and root, perfect earth upon which our ritual shall take place. My friend, your own part is far from over. As the lantern flared, your role was cast, our compact... Our compact written. Oh. Eager we are to see you commence, but first, some illumination is required. We get the Grim Child charm. Across these lands, my kin now spread, harvesting the essence peculiar to my breed, the flame and dream. Seek my kin, claim their flame, and return it to me. Together, marvels shall be achieved. But don't fret, small one, for this task you won't travel alone. My child shall guide you to the flame and gather within itself that burning essence. Burning essence... Child plays a key role in the task, only with it by your side. Can I collect the flame? So, I love everything about the theming of this DLC. I love the music, and I love Grim. I don't like carrying out this part of it, because uh, this is just a series of really repetitive fetch quests that take you all over the kingdom. Um, but... Grim as uh, as Dracula meets a, a circus ringleader is so good. It's so so good. Uh, so once you talk to Grim and get the Grim Child, uh, you get these these flames that appear all over the map uh, that you have to hunt down. And also, like Grim said, you have to have the Grim Child. Wait. Oh, this is uh, this is back in the Crystal Peak. So we have to take the shortcut back up to Crystal Peak. We have to have the Grim Child with us at all times. Uh, it starts off totally innocuous, uh, and then as it gathers flame, it'll actually help you out as a little combat companion. For now, though, it's just you know. A waste of two notches. Oh, there we go. And each time we find one of the torches, uh, we will fight one of these nightmare kin. And you do these in sets of three. Uh, for every three that you do, you go back to Grim spawns another three, and uh, it goes through three stages. The first three that you fight are the easiest. The second three uh, will gain a couple of new moves, and then the third one will gain an additional move and upgrades to the current ones. For now, it's, it's just charging at us and shooting uh, sets of three fireballs. And you do this essentially nine times.
first three are down, so we return to Grim for the first time. The child burns with flame. I can feel it, the warmth of the flame you've gathered together. A masterful opening act. The air hums with excitement. Dear child, you've done so well. Let the fire burn even brighter. Grim is the coolest. The child has grown from idle youth to deadly companion. About these dangerous lands, its aid will no doubt be welcome. Its appearance even changes. Just don't neglect our dance, for it too continues. Keep hunting the scattered scarlet essence. When the child is filled with flame once more, return to the stage and the performance will begin. So the red flame, the scarlet essence, represents nightmares split apart from dreams. Uh, the troop travels from Fallen Kingdom to Fallen Kingdom, gathering the nightmares of the of that uh, of those Fallen Kingdoms. Actually forgot to grab the map. And now that we have every map, look at that! Cornifer is in the shop sleeping. Snoring up a storm. Cornifer's home at last, but look at him, he is exhausted. He always does this, furiously charts a place and collapses once he's done. He'll be sleeping for some time, I imagine, so even with him home, I'm still lost for company. I do love the bug, even for his faults. Seeing his passion for maps, it's something of an inspiration. Corny keeps asking me to join him on his adventures. I've always declined. Maybe next time I should accept the offer. That's nice. It's nice that they get that happy ending. Now let's go back to the Howling Cliffs. Same way we got here before. Oh, I guess it doesn't count for the Stagnus. Not that you really need a map for this area. Feels like it should be incorporated into the Howling Cliffs, though. Alrighty. So we should just drop somewhere here-ish? Not quite. Oh, it's a little bit further in, even. Is this going to take us to the King's Pass, the place that we started the game in? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the very beginning of the game. Well, that was stupid. <laughs> uh, so this second variation of the Grimkin, after the first three, just changes up his moveset a little bit. Uh, not even that substantial. He adds this, which is nothing at all, except an opportunity to get a lot of damage in. Uh, and the fireballs change a little bit, and he still does the charge. And then after we do three of these, there'll be one more upgraded Nightmare Can. Probably only needs one more. <laughs> yup. Okay, that's three more Nightmare Kin down. So we're going to return to Grimm one more time. Baba Gondala. Oh. 
Wonderful. My can arrive and the time has come. The searing fire carries well the ritual's promise. Dance with me, my friend. The crowd awaits. Show them you're worthy of a starring role. Oh, this song is the best! And this fight. This fight's really good, too. Not the best one in the DLC, but it's pretty good. No, he only does one damage, which is not that big a deal. We're getting a good showcase of all the moves. When he does the Dracula bat attack, you can just hop right over them. And this is the second best theme of the game. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The game and the DLC. I love how the audience starts applauding. The music picks up for that attack. Oops. And more applause when he reforms. And there was the drum roll leading up to it. It's just... What a perfect way to incorporate all of this theatricality. <laughs> so he uses the Grim Child to absorb the flames of the Nightmare, like we use the Dream Nail to absorb Dream Essence. Grim is what makes all of the fetch quest stuff, all of the really repetitive stuff, worthwhile. Oh, he's giving us a slightly funner pattern. Oh, I did just use funner, huh? We're doing that now. <laughs> oh yeah, whoops. Can't soar straight over the head. As I proceed to do it again. Also, he will not just let you do that. He won't just let you go straight at him mid bat attack. You sort of have to time it out. Otherwise, he'll teleport to the opposite side, like that. Well, at least it's not doing double damage. Right. <laughs> oh no, I actually got hit by that? Again? Ooh. That's not great. I need to actually be a little bit more careful. I haven't been taking this seriously enough. You do get some good opportunities to heal in this fight. Both when he staggers and during a few of his attacks. Too bad I didn't have much essence there. And he is a beefy boss for essentially the mid boss of the DLC. And the bow. Mm. Even a vessel discarded bears such strength. Fine craft, dear worm. Perf and a perfect tool to prolong the heart of Grim. Bravo, my friend. Hear how the crowd adores you. They've not seen such a show in a long time. The 
snap. Mm. Mm. And we get our grim child back, who was taken up two notches despite us not getting to use him. Two of you will feature many tragedies and triumphs together, I'm sure. And so our great ritual nears its end. Will you continue to harvest the flame even though now you surely see the path it illuminates for us? Our, our scarlet eyes will watch you keenly. Wow, well, into the darkness, harvest the last lingering embers of this kingdom, then return to me and we will complete our dance. This is our very last Charm Notch. We now have an 11. And it means that even with the Grim Child equipped, we can still grab uh, the Defender's Badge. It's always a good go-to. I also really like the Spore Charm uh, for just a one-cost uh, bat, uh, charm. And three more of these to grab. One of which is in Deep Nest. So we're never really done with Deep Nest. There's always something to go back to Deep Nest for. Luckily, this one's just a short jog within the distant village. So it's real close to the stag station. And I think it is this one. But there's not a torch here. Well, there's a torch being held by Brum. Ah, you came. The red flames have gathered from this dead kingdom. You would claim it for our master for his final act. The ritual plays itself out once more. We're like notes in an old, old song, you and me. Endless repeating songs of sacrifice, of servitude, for the ritual, for the troop, for the master. Even this child was born into invisible chains. So we serve. Thus it has ever been, yes? Take the flame then, it's why you came here. It's done, and yet, it's not merely by fortune that we meet here in the darkest, furthest reaches of the world where my master's scarlet eyes cannot see us. A song that never ends is no song at all. You take part in the ritual, yet I sense you truly have no master. Is it so? Perhaps together we can banish that livid flame and let this dead kingdom rest in peace. If you wish to silence the endless song, meet me where it began. If you return to the master and complete the ritual, as long as you do it without regret, I will bear you no hatred. We are merely vessels for the flame, but were we always empty? <laughs> Next up, we have... Our final variation of this enemy, who does this new ground flame technique. And just a variation on those fireballs, and a variation on uh, the original fireball pattern. Oh, I love the sound those flames make. Also, really good to get you used to dodging those. So with Brum, the DLC forks. If you follow Brum's path, you end up with a different charm, a new NPC in town, but you miss out on the best boss fight in the game. Uh, one of them, and the best theme in the game. So we aren't following Brum's ending. And that's three more flames, so one more return trip. Brum is no longer here, and there's no longer an accordion playing. Instead, this. Oh, yeah. 
the heart of Grimm. The coolest intro and the best theme. Uh, so Grimm, oh, in the tradition of uh, some of the harder fights in the game, is just a much more challenging, more aggressive, more damaging uh, refight with new moves.
Oh, yeah. What a fight! <laughs> Oh my god, that's good. <sighs> Only one thing I dislike about that. It's you have to have the Grim Child equipped to fight him, which takes up two notches. Uh, and the fight is really hard to be handicapping you. <laughs> oh, yeah. I heard a piercing cry from the well, echoed about my mind, and left to me at all a daze. I say it was a foul beast's death, but the cry sounded different, divine. Something happened, little traveler? No, don't tell me. Foul events are brewing, it's probably better I don't know. So that is the Grim Troop DLC. For the repetition and the fetching. Mmm, worth it. Good riddance. Town's return to its former self. Nice and quiet, the way I like it. It's quite enough to deal with just the occasional traveler. Whole structures appearing out of nowhere. Dreadful music. Horrific masks. All far more than one old bug should have to face. Faring well on your adventures? So now we have nothing but ending content left. Find a source, saw two bright, horrible, huge eyes staring at me from the door of a dark cave. I pretend I pretended I hadn't heard the voice. Okay. Yeah. Uh that's gonna do it for now. Thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one. <laughs>